Well, good morning. It's uh, about 6.45 here in Starfield, Mississippi, and I have completely finished the project. Um, Sam and I stayed up till about 3 a.m. when he decided he wanted to go home, so I stayed up here until then. Just kind of working on a couple little bugs. Um, I mean, he was fine with it. it. I mean, really, we probably could have gotten a good grade with the few little bugs we had, but um, I'm a perfectionist, and I try to get everything to work, you know, perfectly. So I'm going to give it a little demo. So let me take it out of reset mode, and the screen should come on, so let's give that a second. All right, so now you can see the whole screen. Um, this is controlled with just a PS2 mouse. This is on a uh, Basis 2 board by Digilent, and it uses the, uh, the Xilinx um, Spartan 3E with the 100,000 um, gates, I believe. Um, so you can kind of see I can move the mouse around and the paddle moves around and in the center of the screen is the ball. Let me see if I can change it to a different color. It's easier to see. And we'll start off. Um, what it first does is it will start off going to the, towards the bottom right. So as soon as I click, you know, it bounces off the paddle and you can see it starts to take out the bricks. This is a um, kind of a spin on brick breaker because, I mean, normally you cannot uh, use a mouse to you know, move the paddle anywhere on the screen where you want. So it's kind of a cool implementation of it. And I don't know if you can tell in the video, but my bricks exploded. That's actually a kind of a cool little feature that we um, came up with last night. We actually came out of um, debugging stuff because we were trying to set the bricks to two different colors based on whether or not they were um, there or not, really. And we kind of thought, you know, yeah, that'd be kind of a cool animation whenever it, um, you know, hits a brick. Have a little animation to make it explode, so it gives a little bit more of more character to our game. And soon, I'll be done playing this, and I'll show you. You know, after after I'm done playing the game, after it's done, after all the bricks are gone, the game will automatically reset, and um, it'll go to a pause state, basically the same way it was when it started, except the ball color does not change, and that's by design, and the paddle does not reset, and that's also by design. So, give me just a second here, and I should be done. So we have one more left. Yeah, it's always the last one that's the hardest to get. There we go. So, now the game's reset. And um, another thing, you know, if you hit a couple bricks, and for some reason like you, you're bad at playing the ball goes below the screen it'll also reset and um, that's uh, some of our design criteria um, I've implemented two kind of features so the mouse will move in two directions or two axes um, you can flip the switch switch number two on the basis board and it will lock it to just the x-axis so you can play it more like a, a traditional pong game and this will allow you to position your paddle wherever you are on the screen so you can um, move the paddle up here switch it back on and it's limited to right here. Now, you know, the downfall of that is if it goes below the screen, well, you can't really catch it. Um, another implementation, which um, we kind of used during debugging, and we decided to bring it uh, forth for the final version, is kind of a retro version. So this version has nice rounded edges. The ball has a nice round, shiny shape to it. I'll uh, point it out in a minute. And, uh, of course, the, the paddle has a nice graphic design to it. Well, we developed a retro mode, which basically takes all the different shapes out of it and just leaves you with flat color. So that's the retro version. You can definitely tell the difference where um, the bricks have shading on them, and we turn it off, and they no longer have shading. And the ball also shows up a lot brighter because the whole ball is shaded brightly instead of having some shading on the edges. So let me um, bring you in for a closer view for that. So our bricks have a um, pretty good design to them. The right and bottom edges of them have a um, are are black, and then um, the top and left edges are gray. And around the edge, it's hard to see. It's also a darker color of red. So every single shade of color has a has its darker shade on the edge. And that kind of gives it a, a better shadow effect to it. Um, same thing with the paddle. If I can find it. Um, you can kind of, it's a lot more apparent to see the shading around it as well. And also with the ball. 
So let me change the color to where you can kind of see. You can kind of see it has a 3D shape to it. And um, we were also um, given, with this type of shading, we were also able to implement a black ball. So, you know, you can play with a black ball on the screen, which is really cool. Um, of course, the default color is maroon for Mississippi State University, um, which is where we go to school. And um, so I guess I'll show you the difference between the retro mode and the, and the I guess, the regular mode. So let me switch on retro mode, if I can find the right switch. You can see there's absolutely no shading at all. It's just plain colors. Same with the ball. The ball is just there, and the paddle is just there. It does still have a rounded edge. And um, we also, one of the challenges that we came up with, is we wanted to have a rounded paddle because it just seems more natural to have. Um, you can kind of see where we have some transparency on the edges. And then also, um, well, we can't really show you with the ball because the ball will knock the you know, the bricks out of place, but the ball will also, well, actually I can show you, let's see, if I put the paddle under the ball, you can also see that the ball does have a round shape, um, it's not black around the edges, it's a transparent edge around it, just as the uh, paddle has. So if I move that up here, you can see you know, it does have a rounded edge, and if I turn the retro mode off, you know, it's even more apparent. So that's our uh, final design um, project for our digital system design class here at Mississippi State University. Um, the project was um, created by Sam Knight and Ryan Nazaritan. Um, I believe we are both juniors. I know I'm a junior. I'm, I think Sam's also a junior. So that is our project and I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Bye.